to our uh, stock of the day, and that is uh, Collins Food. It, uh, for the 12 months, just come out with details to the, end of, to the beginning of May, in fact, is delivered an 11% increase in revenue in Europe. Uh, it's reported a 41% jump in revenue. Uh, this is obviously covering uh, products, so well, it's uh, businesses such as KFC and Taco Bell. It's saying that it uh, will continue to grow its store footprint across its brands. It's planning 20, 29 new restaurants in uh, the financial 23 year. It comes, uh, as it predicts, mid-term margins to recover and remain on track to deliver its growth ambitions. So it is um, sounding fairly bullish in what it's looking at going forward. So Mark, how are you seeing Collins Food? Obviously, uh, uh, you gotta consider its input costs at the moment, which will be rising. Yeah, absolutely, obviously. Lettuce, I think they've been yeah. replaced with, uh, with cabbage at some places. Um, yeah, look, they're, obviously they've gained about 12% today. Uh, a few analysts have come out with a um, reaffirming $13 price target. So I think it's around the $10 mark. Mm. Um, Look, I think this is a real case of the market's really got ahead of itself in terms of, uh, you know, all the doomsday, um, etc. Um, I don't think this is going to be the first one of these sorts of updates that's going to, you know, that's going to start pushing stocks up. Um, and we're all pricing in particularly, I mean, you probably classify this as consumer discretionary in a way. Um, but, you know, it... Realistically, you know, the, we had Nike have an update overnight. They also had um, their European sales was basically what salvaged there. Mm. Um, they beat expectations um, and the stock was sold off because we're still obviously a little bit negative and that consumer discretionary sector hasn't uh, particularly been popular. But um, it just goes to show that, you know, we what we're pricing in is a is very predictive, very, you know, very forward looking. And it may, you know, may not happen or it may happen far shallower than what... Um, you know, what analysts are predicting. Um, so there will be these high quality companies like Colin Foods Group that um, that realistically, that if they're controlling their costs, um, I, I, I'm really impressed with the fact that they've, um, to the mid you know, um, midterm outlook uh, yep. basically is under control and may actually pull back because I was a little bit worried about with this one with inflation, um, because obviously food costs you know, is, main, is their main input costs. Um, I think they had chicken shortages at some stage mm. in in, uh, in the UK. So, yeah, look, it's got a pretty. They've upped their dividend as well. Um, that was higher than esti- you know higher than estimated. So um, the revenue and margin growth was kind of in line or above expectation. But but yeah, overall, um, I think you'll. I mean, what people are going to remember is the last six months has been pretty good. We've only really been, abs- you know, going to this absolute doomsday scenario. Um, you know, with rising inflation and, and a recession, you know, hiking rates and a deep uh, recession, are really on the back of pretty much two to three months data. Um, yeah, yeah, you take a look at its share price, and it, it, it began to, t- a lot, along with a lot of other along with all companies the market, yeah. <laughs> tracking on the ASX, uh, it's come off 25%. So as you said, we've seen that uh, jump today. Um, based on that, what would you do with the stock? Look, I'm I'm probably just holding for now, um, just for the just for the broader market risk. Of, I think um, it's very difficult at the moment because you can the fundamentals are kind of hurting you because you if you the dig the deeper you dig into the fundamentals um, and not take into account the sentiment of the market of the broader market, the more trouble you can get into realistically. So I think um, I think do think this will be a bit of a pattern that um, will you know will be. Uh, fairly prevalent over reporting season where we'll see basically things aren't as bad as everyone's cooked them up in their heads to be. Yep. Um, and look, we may get a recession, we may get uh, the, you know that inflation um, thematic continue to go higher, but we may not either. So, and it really wasn't affecting these company results um, you know, six months ago, which is what we're you know, over the last six months. So maybe the, you know, the very latter half. Um, so I think you'll probably see uh, reporting season help stabilise the market both here and in the US. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see in those sort of situations whether you cut your fast food consumption as a result. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Might just want to play a quick catch-up game here because we began with our stock of the day, Collins Food. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, Great update today. I'm sure Mark covered it in uh, adequate detail. I think the highlight was the, uh, the recovery in Europe. 
Uh, that was really the headline that stood out to me. And one of the impressive takeaways that I took out of it as well was that they managed to deliver positive same source, same store, sorry, sales growth, uh, despite cycling what were pretty unprecedented numbers uh, in the prior year, of course, during the pandemic. Uh, and just picking up, I think I came in on the end of the conversation when Mark was talking about, or maybe you, Andrew, were talking about, Obviously, uh, with interest rates going higher and inflation where it is, it will have an impact on mm. uh, consumer discretionary spending. But it's these cheaper brands that tend to hold up better because people scale down to these brands. You know, people that might have uh, otherwise gone to a more expensive restaurant or had a more expensive uh, food option will, will gravitate into these areas. So yep. the drop doesn't tend to be quite as big. So uh, I like the update. Let's not forget that it's in a screaming downtrend though. Uh, it was uh, in last year, it was up above about $14. Uh, and even with the 10% odd move today, it's um, you know still sub 10. So um, a good update, but I, again, I don't know whether I'd go out and, and rush to buy this one just at the moment, just because of those consumer discretionary headwinds. Okay, all right. So what, take it as a hold? Yep, a hold. 